Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I'm going to show you how to produce depth of field. There's several ways you can actually create depth of field in Maya, but I'm going to show you one particular way, which is called ZDEF. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to File, Set Our Projects. This is important because if you're going to render anything out, you need to know where it's going to go. The first thing you want to do is set your project, and then let's go ahead and open up our scene. This model and multiple environments can be found in 3DRender.com. You can actually download it yourself and try this exercise on your own or just go ahead and just have fun with all of these great models. Don't forget to give credit to them. Here is the haunted hallway which you can actually download yourself. Okay, so the next part is actually setting up our render layers. Basically, we want to create a luminance layer. So I'm going to create a render layer. I'm going to make sure I select all of my objects. I'm going to go to edit, select all by type geometry, and I'm going to click this little guy right here, which is um, to create a render layer with a sign selected objects. Go ahead and do that. And I'm going to call this one my beauty pass. So this is just going to be beauty. I'm going to create another one, and this is going to be my Z depth. And while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and create an occlusion. So my beauty pass is basically going to be this right here just a basic render. I do want to light it really quickly so just give me a second while I just light it very very basic so I'm going to go ahead and put in a ambient light it's going to illuminate everything uh, evenly so you kind of have to be careful when you use this type of light All right so it even lights everything evenly I'm going to go ahead and create a spotlight I'm going to look through it look through select it and then aim it at the window something like this if you want to see a preview of it, you can always click on this little light right here and then click on this little shadow. And you can always go to viewport too. So now you can see where my light is. Make my lights a little close. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it back a little bit. I'm going to um, change the color, maybe it's something a little bit warmer. I'm going to soften it a little bit. I'm going to scroll down and go to penumbra angle of 10 and drop off of 3. And I'm going to soften my shadows. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to increase my light radius. And then I'm going to see what my render looks like so far. So this is what it looked like before. This is uh, what it looks like now. The reason why it looks like this is because I need to go into mental ray. So let's go ahead and go into mental ray. I'm using ray trace shadows. So you have to use mental ray. You can see that my light radius is breaking up the shadow. That's great. So now I'm going to go ahead and change this to maybe uh, a 10. My shadow rays. And go ahead and render that. Now I'm getting significantly softer shadows. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 20. Okay, so that's significantly better than what it was before, which is very noisy or no shadow at all. This is very, very basic lighting. I don't recommend that this is going to be your final look. I definitely think you should probably put a little bit more time and effort into it. Um, in a future tutorial, I will demonstrate how to actually texture this and also light it in a better quality and also do fog. But in the meanwhile, we'll just keep it like this for the example. So that's my beauty pass. Next one is going to be Z-Depth. Z-Depth is actually, actually a preset. So I'm going to right click on my Z-Depth render layer and you probably can't see it. So you have to go all the way down to attributes and it's going to open the attribute editor. We want to go to presets and we're looking for luminance depth. So go ahead and plug that in and this is what you're going to get. So when I render, you're going to see that's completely white. Now what happened is that when you attach a luminance, what it actually does is put a surface shader to it, which you can see in the attribute editor. And it also has a node called a set range. And we're going to be messing around with the min and the max. So the min, I'm going to change it to, let's say 0.2. You can already see the preview. I'm going to go ahead and render that out. And you can see that I'm not really getting any information here. It's actually the max is going to be helpful. So let's go ahead and change my max to 50 and then press render. Now I'm starting to see some results. You can see that there's a gradient going through the environment. The closer it is to the camera, the darker it is, the further away it's going to be lighter. That's actually what we want to do, but we need to see a lot more information than just this. We need to actually be able to see the corners of our building and well, just see a little bit more information. So let's go ahead and increase our max to 100 and then render. I'm going to keep it and render. So now we're getting better results compared to before. I'm going to push it a little further. I'm going to change my min to 0.1. And now I'm getting something. That was what it was before. This is what it is now. I'm actually getting depth. I can actually see the details of the staircase. I can see some details there. I'm going to go ahead and push it to 200. 
and render again. Okay, I'm getting better results again. Let's go crazy and go 300, right? So now it's getting a little bit too blown out. And after tweaking a little bit, I decided that I like the value of the min being 0 0.050 and 300. Let's go ahead and go to our occlusion. We're going to right click on it, attributes again, all the way at the bottom, presets. This time it's gonna be occlusion. We can render it now. You can see that the occlusion is not really turning out the way in previous projects, which you can see in my earlier videos where, um, you know, you can see the model very clearly. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen the same way because we're indoors. When your camera is actually inside an environment, occlusion has a tendency not to work the same as if the object was outside in the environment. So we're going to fix that. Uh, here's our surface shader. Here is the ambient occlusion node. We're going to uh, take a look at our samples and increase it to at least 64 and max distance of, let's start with eight and then render. This is the results right now. As you can see, we have a nice occlusion. The max distance just basically means that the occlusion should actually go a little bit further than just superficial. All right, so if you feel like it's a little bright, you can always change your max distance to 10 or a higher value. And you can see that once I render it, the it's a little bit darker. So now it has a little bit more information. Okay, so now I am ready to go ahead and start compositing all of this information into After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these. So file, save image. And this is why I love setting my project. It drops it off directly in images. So now I'm gonna call this occlusion. I'm gonna go to my Z depth. Again, you guys could probably batch render this, uh, especially if you have a moving camera, it still works the same way. This one's gonna be my Z depth. I'm gonna go to my beauty, save image. And this is going to be my beauty. All right, let's go into After Effects. Okay, now we're in After Effects. So let's go ahead and import our images. I know that uh, there's several ways you can actually import footage into After Effects. One of them is just going into the images folder, grabbing these three renders and dragging it into your project. The nice thing about After Effects is that you can actually grab these, let's say my beauty pass, drag it down to the timeline and it will automatically place it this way. Okay, so this is my beauty pass. Let's go ahead and put in occlusion. We're gonna put that on top of beauty and click F4, or you can toggle here into switches. This does the same thing. What you're looking for is a mode and you're gonna change that to multiply. So even though my lighting is really weak, occlusion really does add depth to your renders. I'm gonna actually put a background cause this is distracting me. So let's go to layer new solid. I'm gonna choose probably a warm color like the sun. You can always change it, the color of a solid by gonna to go to layer and then go to solid settings. You can't really see it off, sorry guys, it's off into the corner, but it says solid settings. And then you can actually change the color. Okay, so now that I have a background, it doesn't look so empty back there. Okay, so let's go ahead and use Z depth. So put in Z depth. To create the depth of field, we're gonna to go to layer, new, adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this my Z depth. I'm going to give it an effect. This effect is actually under blur effects, blur, camera blur. That's where we want to go. That puts it in effect. Okay. So now that we have that, you can see that it's already putting some sort of blur on our object. First thing I like to do is turn on repeat edge pixels. So now you don't have that weird little gradient disappearing. So put that on there. The second thing is the blur map under layer you wanna select your Z depth. And right away you can see the effect. You can see that this area right here is a little sharper and over here in the distance is blurry. So if you really wanna see the effect, you can actually just increase your blur radius and now you can see how dramatic it is. It's really blurry in the distance, but it's a little clearer back here. You can actually control this. You can control it using the blur focal distance is right here. And you can see that I can actually drag it forward. And now this area is significantly sharper than over there, the distance. And then I can just kind of bring this in and just kind of focus on that and then just go all the way to the window. So you can see it now. My blur is really dramatic. So that's why you're seeing such a dramatic effect. But what you really want to see is how does this affect our scene? So let's go back to our Z depth and just turn it off. And the effect is still there. So the adjustment layer still is still being affected. And now we can really see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and go grab my blur distance and I can see that I can focus on the window. I'm kind of dragging it down towards the bottom of the staircase and now I'm focusing on or the planks of wood. This is a nice quick tutorial on how to create depth of field. 
Yeah, let me know what you think of my tutorials. Was this helpful? Did it work for you? Did it not work for you? I would love to hear about it. Okay, guys, then I will see you next time.